Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we'll be talking about supports and specifically common mistakes we all make when playing that role. Now this is something I in particular have knowledge of. I've been guilty of a lot of the things I'm going to point out so I understand how counterintuitive some of the concepts are going to seem. Just like any role in Overwatch, if played badly, support can have a game losing impact so it's a good idea to understand some of the pitfalls so you can avoid them. Some of these are hero specific and some are more general for you to think about while a match is playing out, playing too passive. Now this mistake is particularly noticeable with Ana, although it can apply to others as well. The basic principle is that if you play too passively in a team fight and don't fully commit with your team, it can be easy to lose line of sight or contact with the players on your team who need healing the most. So to take a specific scenario, if Ana is playing too far back, when her Ryan pins to initiate, she can lose sight of him and fail to keep him standing as the enemy team naturally focuses him. A good Ana Ryan combo is still amazing in matchmaking despite the meta becoming more dive orientated. If you're too reluctant to make the play of keeping him alive, he'll die in no time, instead of brawling, doing massive cleave damage to their team and building earth shatter. If you follow your Rhine's pin with the biotic nade and get him plus those enemies trying to focus him down so they can't heal, that's a potentially massive play. But to do that you need to commit, you need to be in sight of him, you can't be too passive. It's not just tanks though, if you play too passively and therefore can't heal your Farah or Genji who are hopefully dueling something relevant, then they can lose that duel and therefore the team fight. If you're pocketing something that's in a fight and their opponent doesn't have healing, you're giving your team a massive edge. The key is understanding that winning the team fight is what's important, not whether or not you get eliminated. It's about getting your value as a healer off in time and in the right place to make a difference. Overwatch is a game defined by team fights. People are going to get eliminated, but it's the contribution you make that matters most, not staying alive necessarily. I'm not saying throw your life away. I'm saying look to get the most value you can in every fight, isolating yourself. This section is kind of two in one, but they're so intertwined it's impossible to separate them. On the one hand it's very specific, it's about isolating oneself, and on the other it's about viewing your own survival over the outcome of the collective team fight. So let me set the scene, you're playing Ana or Zen say, and the enemy are running dive against you, let's say Winston and Tracer. The Winston initiates on your team and is trying to isolate you, dropping his bubble and occupying the space between you and your front line, what do you do? Well, a very common mistake is to try and peel away to stay alive. By peel I mean fall away or back off from the Winston. Now this can work if you have teammates peeling with you, however if they don't notice you're in trouble immediately and keep fighting what's in front of them, your running away is a mistake. This is something I struggled with myself for a long time and it sounds crazy, but that is the worst play you can make. The actual play is to do the opposite. You must move towards the relative safety of your team and there's a good reason for this. What a Winston and a Tracer want to do is to get you on your own. That's their whole game plan. Supports for the most part are not designed to duel. Zen can frag and Ana can sleep, but it's not their job. You know what is? Supporting their team. If you isolate yourself from your team when under pressure, you're doing their job for them. And not only will you very likely die, but your potential value in the team fight is removed, making clearing up your team much, much easier. They'll have healers and your teammates won't. Now doing the counterintuitive thing of moving towards your team, even if that means going past the Winston, actually increases your chances of survival. Unless their monitors aren't on, your team will have noticed that Winston and will have peeled back to try and CC him or to eliminate him. You stand a much better chance with them than you do on your own. Plus you'll also hopefully be healing them or discording targets while this is happening. It won't guarantee that you survive, but like I said previously, it's all about the team fight, not whether individuals live or die. So if by not isolating yourself you make the Winston stay too long out of desperation in trying to kill you, he can easily die and the tables have been turned. One of the worst things you can do is give your support value away for free at the beginning of a fight, not getting res value. Now obviously this is specific to Mercy. With the changes to Lucio recently, it's put all of the supports in a very playable place. However, when playing Mercy, who is in a lot of ways defined by the value of her ultimate and the swing factor it can have in teamfights, a huge mistake is in not getting the value out of her. In a lot of ways, it's a tough job. There's not one simple answer to this as there's not just one type of value res. There's the big all my teammates are dead after an alt wipe res, which can be devastating, but then there's also also the tempo res, which is resing key teammates in the mid fight to swing the momentum that way. What is true however is that playing Mercy and getting little or no res value at all is a big mistake and can lose games. And because of that not hiding when you have res in your pocket can be a bad play. The whole point of getting a big res is not only to win a team fight that you've lost, but to hopefully have drawn out ultimates from the enemy team, therefore trading all their collective alt value for just yours. When playing Mercy you have to be playing for res value, as there are other supports who serve 
just team fighting better. Ana has huge utility in her kit, Zen can be fragging out, discording everything and harmony orbing teammates in duels, and Lucio can be moving everyone around in a really scary way to overwhelm teams with speed boost. Mercy is her res, so if you have to call to your teammates that you're hiding because you have it to get your team on the same page, do so, not using Lucio's auras effectively. After the new Lucio was patched into the game, a lot of people were really excited by how much better it felt to play him. With extra speed off walls, his better DPS and healing, there's a lot about him that feels much better to play. But, and there is a but, the reduction in size of his passive auras have made him much harder to play, and it's a very specific kind of difficulty. The new Lucio has to be in the right place at the right time, all of the time. That means you have to be even more conscious of your positioning relative to your teammates now. One of the scariest things in the game is a Lucio shuttling his tanks around making them a huge immediate threat. Roadhog in particular can be terrifying if Lucio is escorting him, moving him into position to hook a money target before they were even aware of his presence. The flip side to all his positive changes is that if you care too much about using his movement tools for their own sake, like wall riding non-stop, ending up on the other side of the map with no teammates in your aura, you're essentially robbing yourself of potential value. Now let's be clear, there are ways to use wall riding to amazing effect, and it can be useful to use it to place yourself behind enemies for a sick environmental kill, there is value there, but it can't be the be-all and end-all of his playstyle. If it is, you can end up going large stretches without actually supporting any teammates, and that is a mistake no matter which way you look at it. The best Lucios are capable of doing both, and both simultaneously, and that's the place you should be aiming for. Lucio is just much harder, you can't get by with just existing and pressing E once in a while. You have to be aware of where his value lies and make sure you're maximising it for your teammates. Now I know personally that playing support can be frustrating, and it's a role that gets a lot of blame for all sorts of things, including tanks who seem to have a death wish and think that just because you're playing Anna, you can keep them alive through anything. Even she has her limits to the miracles she can work. But it's just like every other role. There are things supports can work on to become better players. This list should help you guys with some of the mistakes we've all been guilty of. Let me know in the comments if you guys found this video useful or if there were any other clear support mistakes I didn't mention. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss one of our videos again, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in good company. Please check out our Discord where you can join one of the biggest Discord communities for Overwatch out there. If you want to see us tilt live for your enjoyment, please check out our Twitch channel which will be linked in the description. Also finally, please follow the Your Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and streams. I've been Eddie the Chump and until next time.